a good example of how you can utilize slides in your classroom for collaboration. Now I'm going to do just a quick recap um, because I want to be sure that we're all on the same page with permissions. So I'm going to open another tab, another tab in my, my Google Chrome bar, and I want to talk you through just two seconds of this. I've tried to share it every time we've done a session is to be sure that when you're working in Google that you are toggling over to your professional account. Remember, a lot of documents have permissions that we've set. We learned that in the, in the session, Power of Permissions. And if you are attempting to create a document in your personal Google account, then you may run into some hiccups when you're sharing that with your students. So for me, as you can see, I do have my personal here and I have my professional as well. I make sure my pictures are different so that I can keep them separated okay so when you're working in google be sure the first thing that you need to be sure of is that you are working out of your professional google account otherwise you may run into some hiccups all right so here's what's going to happen i'm going to come over here and show you all of the google um, applications that we have access to and i'm going to click on slides we're just going to talk about slides and i pulled it up just in case but right here is the uh, the Google slideshow that we're going to talk out and talk about collaboration. So as we talk about being virtual and reworking some of the basic things that we've done in classrooms, and we have to think creatively, we have to think outside the box. So here is one idea with a Google slideshow. This is an option, obviously, if you're a, if you're a Microsoft person and you are using um, PowerPoint online, you're using the online version of that, then you can also have this option in Microsoft. I like to say that Microsoft and Google are their competitors, obviously, and they're kind of like Coke and Pepsi. And um, some students <laughs> used to tell me, uh, you mean like Popeyes and Chick-fil-A. So either way that you want to make that connection, they, they both they both are competitors with some of the same functionalities. All right. So, but I'm basically showing this option through Google Slides. I love slides because a slide presentation, even with PowerPoint, can be used in so many creative ways. And this is just a creative way that you can create a slideshow that really works in a virtual setting. And because of the permission options with a shared document, your opportunities and your options are endless. So here is a way that you can create, especially if you are probably third grade and up, you can create an all about me slide presentation with your students. So think about it. Most of us on the first day of school, even all the way down to kindergarten, we take a little time with our students and get to know them, let them maybe say something about themselves, maybe their favorite food, their favorite color, whatever, favorite movie, all those great options. Now you can do that from a Zoom meeting and allow each student to have, um, have a moment to, to give some fun facts. You could do that through a Flipgrid. You got lots of great options that our department can kind of push and show, show as far as some technology resources. But some of us like to take that information and turn it into maybe a book or some type of presentation or something like that. Well, this is a great way that you can get um, everyone engaged into a document, everyone learning how to, to collaborate on a document, and then get to know something about your students as well. So I came into this slideshow and basically used a variation of my Bitmoji classroom as my, my home page for myself. Um, where I could change information and, and you know talk about the, from my daughter to my son to my husband to our dog all the great things that I could add right here just about me for my for my students to learn about me by clicking on these options. So from here, I came in and I just used my children's names in this presentation. I just took and added a blank slide and put the students' names on each slide. So obviously I could continue this process and make as many slides as possible. So I could give the directions to my students to come in, learn something about me, find your name, and I could give some basic directions. 
three facts about yourself and a picture or a bitmoji, whichever one you want to do. And by the end of this slideshow, you could have a complete um, slide presentation of all of your students. And then you could come back and share it with the entire class and talk about some, some students that have things in common, some things that kind of connect us all, even though we're virtual. But because of collaborative documents, this is a great option that works super seamlessly. So as you can see, this is just a basic slideshow presentation. Um, I copy and pay, I kind of created this little background with just a little bit of shiplap right here um, and, then, and a little rug, you know, but you don't have to do any of those options. You could just make it basic, plain and simple um, and then let students, you know, have as much freedom as they want. Um, because this is, is copy it, this is pasted into this slide. It's not pieced together with tools. Um, they can't change that. But you could, if you're, if you're with uh, students that, that you can really trust to even change their background, you could give them permissions all the way up to changing the background of their slide. So here's how the permissions work for you. So remember, with Google, most of your options live in the share feature. So if you click on the share option, this again is gonna get us to that, what we've said all week, the power of the permissions right here. So obviously you could type in students, but if you wanted your students to come in and edit their page in this presentation, your best option would be to get a link and then drop that link right into your Canvas page. You know, so this could give students, this is almost like a, a flipped concept. You can have them go in, complete their slide, and then the next day discuss all of, all of your students in depth in your class meeting. So how would we do that is simply by getting a link. Now we've talked about the two important um, features that you need to know with the link would be who can access it and what do you want them to do with that access. So when we are working within our Google apps, our school apps, everything that you want to share is going to default to Newton County Schools. And again, that is great. That is a super, super important feature. Um, so you can leave it at that. However, if you have students, again, that share devices and, and maybe older students that do like I do have a Google account and they toggle back and forth or they actually don't log in to into Google using their Newton County Schools credentials, then that's a time when you have to consider um, when is the right time to use the option of anyone with a link. Now for me, because this would deal with students and this would be student information, I would be sure that I kept that closed to Newton County Schools so that it stays within the Newton County School domain, but that might require a second conversation with your students to be sure that they understand they have to be logged in, they have to access through their Newton County Schools or they will get that roadblock of, I can't access this document. So with all of the permissions, be sure that you hear me always say, you need to understand the nature of your document when you are setting the permissions to access. I always suggest when we are dealing with students, student information, sensitive information, keep those things right here into Newton County Schools. So that would be our first option. The next would be, what can they do with that? So because we want students to come in and edit their page of this document, that would have to change to an editor link. So basically, I'm taking my link that is only Newton County School domain can access it, and you can come in and edit it. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh, goodness, you're giving students a lot of permissions. What if they come in and mess up someone else's page? Well, again, most of us start our classroom with norms in your classroom. So I would suggest that when you're working with collaborative documents, be sure that you add that into your virtual norms you know, that we make sure that we stay on our, on our page, we stay in our space in a collaborative document. Because this is such a powerful option, but you want to be sure that you set the expectations before you even start. 
So, so that, that is, it could be a concern, but I always say, you know, communication is key. So communicate with your students so that this is beneficial to everyone. So from there, I can copy this link. And once I've copied this link, I can place this right into my Canvas page. Um, I said yesterday in our Google Docs, if you're real fancy and you like to pin this behind a picture, click here, click here, you have that option as well. But you could email this link to your students, but most of us work within our Canvas course, so everything stays right there together. So now you can see how you've just basically taken a simple slideshow, a simple Google slide presentation. You've added a front page. You've gone in and you've customized each page with each student's name. Um, or if you're older, you could just, you could say, co you know, copy this page and have them to, or add a page. It really depends on the, the nature of your students and their, their savviness or their ability to follow some directions. You, only you know what your students can handle. But now all of a sudden you've created this great resource that you can go back and refer to later. Um, or you could go in and, and share it with your students and then have um, pair your students up and have them introduce each other. You know, you could take this so many in so many different directions. You could also take a slideshow like this, and if you are, you know, fifth grade um, standard that I, I always refer back to is constructive and destructive forces. So you literally could come in and you could make a slide, you could divide your students in half and half work on constructive, half on destructive, and you could come in and each student in a group has to you know, add a slide. You could actually have the different forces listed on a page, go in and assign. So I hope that your creativity right in this moment is just going really high and thinking of how can you use this option for your students to have them collaborate together and then put together some type of presentation. So you could even create a template and push it out to a small group so that they could collectively work on some type of presentation to share back to the, to the whole class. So because of collaborative documents, you really have opened the door to virtual collaboration, even in the classroom, collaboration in small groups when you have those devices. And you can turn this into any, anything. You could, the sky's the limit when you are looking at creating a presentation together as a, as a collective group. So basically, like I said, to recap, and then I'm going to jump on some questions. This is a super simple concept, you guys, but it's so, so powerful, and you can take, take it in any direction. I came into my slides, created a slide based on All About Me, and this for this um, presentation, I'm thinking of every student in my class completing a slide to learn about them so that we could learn from each other virtually. I came in and added a slide, added their name, and I would give specific directions. When in doubt, go over the directions with your students. Again, you know the area, you know the age of your students, you know what students can handle, but if when in doubt, just model or in, model your whole process of how they need to go in and add to their slides. And be creative because you have so much power by being able to share with them. For those of you that are feeling apprehensive, start small. You know, ask for, you know, one thing. Tell me, tell me one thing, write one sentence about yourself on your slide. You know, don't go into four or five details if you're feeling uncertain. Um, have those norms about collaborative documents with your students and be sure that you know what you're trying to do with this link. The who can access and what they can do with that access. Okay, because that's, that's a huge hiccup for a lot of people. Okay, so like I said, this was a really quick little nugget and I really hope that this was super beneficial for you and that you can think of some ways that you can make this work.